everybody. Welcome to another episode of Crafting with Christina for Two Scrapbook Friends. Okay, so today we are going to be making a birthday card. So this is the idea of the card that we're going to be making today. And I'm just calling it a happy birthday to you tropical card because it's very, very tropical. Um, so today for what you're going to need, um, we're doing everything basically lawn fawn. So the first thing you're going to need is your stamp and die set. I'll put this here so we can kind of see it. And it's called the Two Can. Two Can Do It. But this is the stamp and die set. So we've got this stamp we're using. We also have, and I've already cut them all apart, um, but you also have the dies if you choose to do them. You can also hand cut them if you just have the stamps. So whatever you want to do. Um, this is the stamp set we're using. Um, we're also using the Tropical Leaves background stencils. So it comes with two different stencils and that's how we do this whole layering effect. So we're using this. Um, I'm also using from Lawn Fawn, it's, the, it's called the Giant Happy Birthday to You die. So it's Happy Birthday to You and it's uh, just a nice die that we're gonna be cutting out as well. So it is a standard A2 size card. So which means that it's 4.25 by 5.5 is our finished card. So the little things that you're going to need today is either score tape or liquid glue. However, you want to, um, you definitely want liquid glue. It's a lot easier to put down your happy birthday to you um, when you're using liquid glue. But score tape, if you want, I always like to put score tape on the back of my background before I attach it to my card base. But you can use glue, no problem. So for your actual card base, what we like to use um, is a 110 pound Nina white cardstock. It's just a very thick cardstock. So when you're actually putting your card up, you don't have to worry about it opening and falling or anything. It's a very sturdy cardstock base. So this comes in an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. And all you're gonna do is you're going to cut it in half. I've already put score tape on here. You're gonna cut this in half and then you're gonna take your piece and you're just going to fold it in half. So the one sheet of paper is gonna give you two backgrounds. So this is your card base. Um, so as you can see right now, if you want, if you're gonna do score tape, you can pause it, put score tape all the way around it, um, or you can do that at the end, or you can use liquid glue, whatever you like. But this is your card base. You're going to need some Bristol cardstock for blending. So you can either use Bristol cardstock and I'll show you what the pad of paper looks like. Um, when you're doing blending, you got to Whoops. You got to make sure you use the right. Um, you have to make sure you use the right paper because if you try to use the 110 pound or the 80 pound, it is it's definitely doable, but it makes it a lot harder to blend. So my go to is Bristol. Um, it's perfect for any ink blending. You can also use the Vicky Booten foundations paper is also great for blending. This is definitely one of my go to's. Um, you're going to want hammer mill paper for Copic coloring. You can do coloring on, I know some people use the 80 pound Nina uh, white cardstock, which is fine as well too, but I have done so much coloring over the years and I swear by hammer mill paper. It comes again in eight and a half by 11 sheets. I usually cut mine in half so they fit in my Misty Perfect. So hammer mill is definitely my paper of choice when I'm doing all my Copic coloring. You're going to need, um, and again, sorry, the Bristol paper here, this is gonna be your background. So you can choose when you're cutting it out, you either just cut out a piece of Bristol um, that is going to be um, five and a half by four and a quarter. Um, I use my Lawn Fawn stitched, uh, large stitched rectangle because that's the exact right size for a card base. Again, you can cut this out previously. Um, I did mine earlier or you just cut it out in a little bit bigger, do your stenciling and then cut it out to the right size after. Just to save time, I've already cut mine out. But if you like to do it um, so that you know it's, it's the exact right size, then cut out your piece of Bristol that's six by six. That's the size of the stencil. So you can cut out your Bristol, do this, um, and then you, then you cut it down after the fact. So I sometimes do that as well. So you're gonna need just any green cardstock and any white cardstock. Do you see how I layer this? It just gives it a little bit more of a nice standing out effect. So any green paper, any white paper, it just can be standard cardstock, it really doesn't matter. 
Um, I'm using the Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink because it's Copic friendly. So anything that says alcohol marker friendly, that's what you want if you're gonna be coloring your stamps um, with your Copic markers. So the Distress Oxides, I'm just going to go very, very basic today. Um, sometimes when I do this stencil, I like to do two different greens for each, um, each piece. But what I'm going to do is just one stencil, I'm going to do Rustic Wilderness. One stencil, I'm going to do Cracked Pistachio. And then I like to, if you see, I did kind of around the edges. And I like to use peacock feathers just to bring just some bluey, greeny into there as well too. So those are the three colors that I'm using for the stencil. Um, Copics. So I'm going to be using N8 and N5, YG07, YG05, um, Y18, YG with four zeros, <laughs> E25, BG23, and YR68. So the, if you're going to be following along with my coloring, and I'm going to do very kind of basic coloring, but those are the colors I'm going to be using today. Um, if you have a Misty tool, I would highly recommend it. It just makes it easier when if you have to stamp a couple times. Any die cutting machine, I use a Gemini Junior. Mine's an automatic one. I've cut most of my stuff out already though, so you don't have to listen to the machine going. Um, blending brushes to uh, blend your ink colors. And foam squares, because if you want, um, if you're gonna do like what I did, I put foam squares behind them just to kind of make them stand out a little bit. So there's all your products that you're going to need and let's get started. So as I said, first things first, cut down, cut your um, 110 pound Nina in half and then fold it in half and you have your card base. So that's all ready to go. And what we're going to do first is we're going to be doing the background. So again, however you want to do your Bristol paper or your Vicky Bootens, whatever paper you're going to be using to do your um, inking on, you want to grab that now. So as I said, I've already cut mine down. Sometimes I'll do, I'll first do it in six by six and then, um, and then I'll cut it down after. But as I said, just to save time. Now I like to work on, um, it's getting a little stained. I definitely need to do a thorough cleaning, but I like to use my make art station because um, I like to hold down the, um, my stencils and stuff on there as well too. Plus it's, it is very easy to clean. You can use this or if you have a craft mat or something like that as well too, um, then you want to wonder when you do that. Because if you're gonna put it on here, you just gotta make sure you scrub it because you're definitely gonna get ink on things if you have not, if you've cut your paper down. So what we're gonna do is I can see when I use this Lawn Fawn stencil here, um, it says, I know you probably can't see it from here, but it says Lawn Fawn and I know that I have this. I want this down and I want this facing up so I know which way I'm going. So I'm gonna go in, first of all, um, actually, I think I wanna start with this one. So I'm gonna start with a bigger one here and this is where I'm gonna do my darker colors. I like to start with the one that has, a, it really doesn't matter which one you do, but I just find if you start with this one because it has more on it, it's going to be easier to figure out where the second one goes in. So I'm going to put this down here. Now again, if you have pixie spray, you can pixie spray the back of it. Um, typically that's what I do, but I'm just going to show you that you can do it if you don't have the pixie spray on here. I'm just going to move this down here a little bit because I want some from up here and some from down here on here. And if you're using the Make Art Station, you can even hold, um, hold it in place as well. So I'm gonna go in with my darkest color. I'm gonna go in with Rustic Wilderness. So what I'm gonna do to kind of give it this two-tone look, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna start really heavy in some spots. And then I'm just gonna go with a bit of a lighter touch to the top. And that will actually give you the two-tone look right off the bat. So instead of going with two different colors, you go heavy on one side and then you can go lighter on another and it'll still look then like you have two, um, two different colors here on your stencil. So let's get in and get all these colors down. A little bit lighter over here. It's just nice to have that little bit of a shading look so that it's not all the exact same color. Oops. See, this is why I usually use Pixie Spray so that my stencil doesn't actually move. <laughs> but I forgot to grab it, so we're gonna not use it today. 
Okay, so we're gonna put some down here. Shade it a little bit lighter on the bottom here. And again, I'm using Distress Oxides, but you can use any inks, any greens, any, I've done this with purples and pur different purples and pinks and oranges and yellows. This stencil makes really, really, really cool backgrounds. Okay. Okay, so now this piece, oh, it looks like I missed just a little bit in the top corner, perfect. So this one is now done. Let's move the Rustic Wilderness off to the side. And here is your first stage. So you see how I have a little bit darker and a little bit lighter. So it actually gives it this two-tone look when you're doing your stencil already. So we're gonna put that off to the side and now I'm gonna grab the second stencil. Now the nice part about this, so long as you can see the lawn font and it's at the bottom, you know you're in the right spot. And because it's a see-through, um, piece here you can see where the other ones in this so it's very easy to see where this fits it fits in all the little holes now I'm going to go in with a cracked pistachio um, now because I used a, the darker color first you can grab um, either like a paper towel or a sheet of paper or something you just want to take that little bit of that extra green I'm just using it on a black of a regular sheet of paper, you just want to take that little bit of that dark green off so that it doesn't um, get into your lighter green. So let's see what cracked pistachio looks like with this. So now I know I'm going to be right about here and I'm just going to go in with my ink colors and I'm going to go darker in the one spot and then I'm just going to lighten up my hand, my pressure on my hand and then it's just going to do a little bit lighter on the other side. It's just a quick, easy way instead of using a bunch of different colors to give it that um, to give it that two tone look. Okay, so let's go over here. Dark to light. Okay, and then I think over here, and then I think we're good to go. Make sure you get all the little holes. Just adds a little something to it as well. Okay, put the lid on here. Pull that off. And how great is that background now? See again, you got light, you got dark, and it looks like you've used a couple different colors, but you've really only used two. And now you have this fantastic tropical background on here. But as I said, when I did this card, and I'll put this in view again, I kind of thought, you know what, I really wanted to have just a little bit of a, you know, that other different look kind of shading onto the side. So again, if you like it like this, stop right here. But if you want to kind of do that little bit of edging, I use the darker, the peacock feathers. So all you're going to do now, put some ink on your, on your pad here, on your blending brush, and you're just going to go kind of start off and then just slowly work your way on because you don't want to, um, and then you can start going more into the corners, blending it in, but you don't want to go grab like this and then just shove it right on there. You want to kind of start off and then blend it. You can always add more color, but you can't take any away. So that's why I like to start off the edge and then start rolling and putting it into the center here. Now I like to kind of, when I go into the corners, I like to kind of blend it a little bit more in and then just keep it kind of easy just along the edges here. So it all kind of depends on the look. And once you're playing around with it, you get a better idea of how it's gonna, how it's gonna look. But it just kind of gives it that softer edge, but it's really, I like to pull in that little bit of that teal color in with the green since I'm not, since I didn't actually use it this time in my leaves. And you're just gonna go all the way around your card till you've got it all blended. So it just kind of gives it that, so if you look at this one compared to this one, this one I did a lot less. I just wanted to kind of give you an idea of what it looks like when you go definitely more into depth and that's gonna make the center stand out. 
So you choose whatever you want to do, lighter, darker, more, however you want to do. It just gives it just a very unique look when you've got that shading all the way around the edges. So now you have your background piece done. We're going to put this aside, get this out of the way. And I'm going to make sure I've got most of the ink off my fingers. So you can put the whole thing together later or now you can grab your background because this is going to be our, you're going to grab your card base because your background's done. So again, now's the time to, if you've done this on the six by six, make sure you cut this down now. Um, either use your die if you have the die with the stitching or you cut it down to five and a half by four and a quarter. So the nice part about doing it with a six by six is now you choose um, exactly where you want your stencil to be and where you want to cut that out. So what you're gonna do is either grab glue, or if you do what I did, grab score tape. I really like score tape because then I know this card is never going to ever come off the card base. <laughs> this stuff is so sticky. And then you choose wherever you wanna do it. So when I do mine, um, I like to put it down into the top corner. And then I can still kind of move it around and see and make sure that the top is lining up perfectly. Smooth it down. And now I have my card and my base all ready to go. Next thing you're going to want to do is now you're going to grab your green and you're going to grab your white, um, your two different colors of cardstock. And again, you can now take a look at your card, match it up however you want to do. And you're going to grab your die cutting machine because what you're going to do is grab um, any green. I'm just going to kind of grab this. You're going to put your, um, your die down and you're going to put it through your machine. I'm not going to do all that online, but um, on, on here. But when you printed that off, so now you have a green that says happy birthday to you once you put this through your machine. So you're going to do this in green. And as I said, it definitely works like this, but it's nice if you also cut it out in white. So now you're going to, you're going to cut this out in green. You're going to cut this out in white. And now what you're going to do, I like this look to actually layer it, but you have your, you have your white behind it. So when you put this down on here, it stands out a little bit more. You can do this in black if you want it to stand out even more. Um, I just like the look of the white on there. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your glue, once you have them both cut out, and you're just gonna kind of just put a little bit of glue all along the back. Doesn't have to be perfect, but you're gonna take your glue here you're going to put it all along the back of here just so that you can stick it to your next piece. Okay. And now you're just going to put it, just in case there's extra glue, I like to put it down in here so I don't get it on my mat. And now you're just going to layer it on top of the white, but make sure that white is showing just that little bit so it gives it that kind of 3D effect. There we go. And just push it down so that your glue sticks. There we go. Okay, so now you have this happy birthday that has that 3D look to it. That's why I like to layer things up here. I've always, I always like to layer my happy birthday to you die. Okay, so now that you already have your background here, you can now grab your glue and we're just going to glue this right down to the center. So again, just kind of put little dots of glue everywhere. Doesn't need to be perfect so long as it's along the edge and it holds down your whole die cut. Okay. Perfect. So now you just want to stick it in the center, just kind of center up your card. Push it down. And now your whole background is ready and all we have to do is now do some Copic coloring just to add those pieces to it. So here's your background. You can put that aside. And what you're gonna do now is you are going to grab your stamp set. So the ones that we want off here, and I'm gonna grab my Misty right away. And I'm going to move this aside for a second. 
Okay. So now I'm gonna grab my piece of Copic or my hammer mill paper so that I can do my Copic coloring. And the ones that we're gonna use today is the two toucans. And we're gonna use this little butterfly here, the kind of half flying butterfly. And we're gonna use the little lizard. I love that little lizard. And then we're gonna use the small branch, not the large one. So those are the ones that we're gonna be using out of the stamp set. The other ones are absolutely fantastic. I love the little jaguars and the sayings and stuff on this is so cute. Okay, so now that we have these down, you're going to stamp them up. So I'm gonna pick them up on my piece. I'm gonna use, again, if you're using Copics, make sure that you use an alcohol-friendly um, ink. I swear by the Lawn Fawn Jet Black. I think this is the best. So now I'm just gonna use, I'm using my smoosher tool just to press down to make sure that it gets down there. This thing by uh, Maker Forte is so fantastic. And um, I like to do mine twice only because I know that I really need to get a new ink pad and this is not dark enough. You still, you can't see, you wanna make sure your lines are perfectly dark and black. Okay, so now I'm just gonna use my smoosher. And that is much better. Now I can see my lines are good. So I'm gonna take my chamois, my Lawn Fawn chamois. This thing is the best because you just need to just make sure it's wet, not soaking wet, but just nice and damp. And it cleans off all your stamps. It's fantastic. Okay, so now we're just gonna put these guys away. Don't want to lose. I always like to put them right back away because you don't want to put them aside and all of a sudden you realize you lost some of your stamps. Okay, so now we can put this aside. And now you want to grab your Copic markers. So let's start with the two cans. So what you're going to do, and again, I'm going to keep this very simple so that it's easy to play along with. I grabbed N8 and N5. So you're going to grab your darkest color. When I use my darkest ones, or especially if my Copic markers are new, I like to take off both ends so that it breathes. Um, especially with dark colors and if it's new, sometimes if you don't take the other end off, it's just gonna glob and it really sucks when you do that. So I'm gonna do this and then I will hold it up so you can see kind of what I've done. So I'm gonna go around the edge here. I'm gonna go across the bottom just to give it a bit of shading down here and then along the bottom of his wing. Then I'm gonna go around the whole head on this one. And again, right around the bottom here, bottom of his wing and in there. So I'll hold this up so you can see what I've done. And now you're done with this color. So now you're gonna grab your N5 and you're just gonna kind of go over everything that you just did and now fill in the rest of his body here. But you always like to go over, especially since we're not doing one number up from the N8 um, going into the N5. So I'm going up a couple of numbers. So you definitely want to make sure you go over what you did just so that it nicely blends into the dark color. That's why I like to go over the dark with the light. And then you're just going to color the whole rest of the little bird's body. I'll hold that up for you. Now you're done with your dark colors and that just kind of gives it just that little bit of a look with the shading and stuff on there. Now, I like to actually color their faces in with a little bit of yellow. Again, it's whatever choice you want, but it's YG0000. Uh, so I just liked, again, I don't take both of them off, but it's just kind of a light yellowishy kind of greeny color and it doesn't add a whole lot of color but just enough so that it's not a white his white face isn't white and then again you can choose whatever color you want to do with the beaks um but I'm going to do orange so I'm YR68 and I'm not my markers are older I'm not worried about globbing with these so I'm not taking it off but I'm doing this first part of his beak and then don't forget to fill in his little feet and this part of his beak now, I also wanted to do, um, I figured instead of getting into all sorts of colors, I know I did a few more on these in different colors, um, 
but I thought now that we have these colors out to do their beaks, I'm going to do the, um, I'm going to do the butterfly and stuff with the same color. So I'm just going to say fill this with orange. Now you can put that aside. Um, let's do yellow next. So I'm, I'm using Y18 and of course any Copic, any yellow, any color you want to do on here. And then I'm just going to fill in the butterfly body here with that. And then last, I'm going to go in with uh, BG23 because I want to pull that almost like that peacock feathers in again that we did on the outside edge. I want to pull that teal colored in here and then I'm just going to finish off this guy with it. Okay, so now for my little lizard, I'm using um, YG07 and YG05. So I'm going to start with the darker, which is the YG07, and I'm just going to fill in the dark on the three little dots. So I'll hold this up again so you can see it. The three little dots. And then I'm just going to do just a section along the bottom of his body and I'm going to fill in his legs. And I'm also going to fill in the tree branch. Okay, so now you've got that. So now you're going to grab your lighter color and you're just going to go over the rest of the lizard body. So now he just has a little bit of shading on the bottom and now the rest of him is filled in. And then you're just going to grab whatever brown you want. I'm just using E25 and just fill in the branch. Okay, so now you're finished with the coloring. And I did that, as I said, super simple, done, easy. Move those off to the side. Now, if you have the dyes to go along with it, um, then you're going to grab those now. So you're just gonna kind of hold these up here. Now I like to use, just because I've already done all this work for coloring, I like to make sure when I put mine through my die cutting machine that it's not gonna move. So I like to use purple tape on all mine. So then when I put them through the die cut machine, then um, you don't need to worry about any of your pieces moving. So we're gonna get these all set up here. And then we're going to cut these guys out and finish putting the card together. And I don't know if you guys can hear that, but we are just the beginning of a thunderstorm. So <laughs> let's hope it doesn't get too loud and let's hope I don't lose hydro. <laughs> okay, so now what you're going to do is you're going to put these through whatever die cutting machine you have. I've already redone these and pre-cut these, um, but I just wanted to kind of show you to use purple tape so that nothing moves, right? Because when you're putting like this, nothing's gonna move here. So now you're gonna put them through whatever die cutting machine you have. And when you've cut them all out, this is what they look like. So I have these cute little toucans, some butterflies, all sorts of fun little things. So now you're gonna go back. You've got all your pieces here. And now we're just gonna put them together. So you're gonna go back and grab your glue. I'm going to grab, I'm going to start, uh, this is actually the only piece that I'm gluing down. The rest I'm going to use foam tape with. So now I'm just going to grab my little glue here. And just because I wanted him sitting on a branch. So what I did with mine is I kind of had this, I put the branch, glued it down, but I put it off the edge a little bit because I, I didn't really want that white edge showing there. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna turn this around and you're going to cut the edge of that off. So now you still have that white edge, but it doesn't look like there's just a random branch. At least it looks like it's coming in from somewhere. So I cut the edge of that branch off. And now you're just gonna grab your foam pieces so you need some big, some small. And I'm going to take my one toucan, put it on here, take the back piece off if I can. <laughs> and you're just gonna place them wherever you want. So this guy's gonna sit on top of this. Use another one on here. And I'm gonna have this guy sitting on top of the branch on here. Now these ones are smaller, so you're gonna need smaller pieces. So now I'm gonna grab this. And I'm gonna have them flying on the edge. 
And then I'm gonna have this cute little adorable lizard. I'm gonna actually put two pieces just so that he's sturdy on him. Take the ends off. And I'm gonna have him crawling along the happy birthday. And now you have your finished card. So you've got your cute little tropical, your tropical theme with your happy birthday to you with all your little uh, toucans and lizards and butterflies and uh, all your little fun things. So hopefully you enjoyed that. And uh, until next time, we will see you with another video. So have a great day, everybody. Bye.